So there is one big question. What is the future of education? Is it online or classroom training? Now think about this, from a long time, there's no major update in learning, right? So if you, if you follow from the last two centuries, we have the same way of teaching, right? We have a classroom environment, we have teacher and then we teach. So every student has to come to a college or a class from, it doesn't matter where they stay. So maybe they have to travel for one hour, uh, they have to travel for one and a half hour or two hours. So they travel to the particular location and then in a classroom type of environment, we learn. Now, even the tools which we use, so we use a blackboard where we have, we use chalk or we have a whiteboard where we use marker. And then we got some new advancement in classroom environment, which is uh, the use of projectors, right? So, you know, when projector was introduced to different colleges, everyone got excited. Uh, the reason we have projector is to demonstrate images. For right? example, let's say if I'm teaching in a classroom session, if I'm talking about some concept, I have to draw everything on a board. I'm not that good with drawing, so of course I'll mess it up, I will do some mistakes there. And that's where people thought, okay, let's have projector so you can show uh, pictures on the screen. But then colleges took it really differently. They, what they did, they, so teachers, they created PPTs. Because that makes sense, right? When you have projectors, we should be using PPTs. But in PPTs as well, instead of putting images, we started putting text. Not single word or single line of sentence, we used to put the entire paragraph on the projector. As a student, what we do, we used to write those on papers, on books. That's where the problem started. So we wanted some advancement, but what we got is projector and that too in a not inefficient way. In fact, this was my experience when I went for teaching as well. So I, I went to some colleges, uh, some corporate training and then in that as well, in corporate as well, we used to show PPTs with text. That doesn't make any sense, right? But yes, people are updating now. So I've you know, even I've given training to different colleges on this, how to create PPTs and how to make proper content on the screen. But then think about this. In all of the fields, if you talk about medical field, if you talk about different fields which you think about, we have technology advancement. What about education? And that's where nowadays, you know, to save time or in fact in classroom session as well, if you a teacher can teach in, in its own pace, right? So if, if I take a session for 60 people, I have my own pace. Of course, uh, as I can ask people if they're getting stuff. Some people will get it, some people will not get it because we have different pace in which we understand concept. In fact, uh, there's also a knowledge gap. Example, let's say if you have 60 people and there are five to six people that know the prerequisites. Uh, there are 10 people, they know prerequisite but not entirely. And then all the other candidates, they don't know the prerequisites and that's where problem starts. Because if I, as a teacher, when I teach, I will see some five or six people and they are giving proper feedback. That means whatever I'm teaching is great. I'm not even looking to other people. That's what is happening in training as well. Uh, so that's why, you know, we have to also focus on backbenchers. But still, there's a gap, right? Uh, so we assume that, that you should be doing something. And if you don't know that stuff, that's where problem starts for students. Now, this is where we got online training. Example, we have YouTube now, right? YouTube was not just entertainment platform we got it as an education platform because if you can see we have so many education content on YouTube now one of the advantage of YouTube and other uh, video platforms you can talk about Udemy Udacity there's so many websites right there's one thing in common it is self-paced uh, which simply means you have to go there and you have to watch those videos by yourself so you can watch it in your own pace example let's say if you feel hey I want to complete five modules today that's your choice I want to complete only half a module today. That's your choice. You have your own pace. That's where education is going now. So from classroom, people are loving this online training. So you can have your own pace. Uh, you can watch the same video multiple times. You don't have, it's not that you have watched it once your job is done. No, you can re-watch those videos. So yes, there's a huge advantage when it comes to online training. In fact, last year, I was giving a training to one of the company in a classroom type of session. And suddenly, uh, I have not received certain mails. I know, in fact, I have not received the next training. So normally, I take you know, a lot of training for that company. And in September, I took my last training. And then for the next four to five months, I have not received any calls. I thought, okay, they don't like my training. So I thought it's okay. But later, I realized they went for online training. So they have dialed with some other company and they went for online training. So instead of providing classroom training, they have given access to some online courses to their candidates. And then in somewhere around March or April, again, got a call and they asked me to take training. I thought, what's wrong now? So when I went for the feedback, I asked certain people there what went wrong with the online training. And they said, online training is boring. 
okay because trust me to learn something it's first of all learning something needs efforts right and that too if you're watching boarding sessions uh, that's where the problem starts and trust me online trainings are boarding if you're interested it's exciting if you're not interested online training are boarding example when i attended some finance training last year it was quite boring because i was not interested and that too, it was online you know in classroom session we have some excitement uh, we can have fun people can talk about different stuff because when you gather together that's where learning starts right in online training you are sitting at your home or maybe you're sitting somewhere so to, how do you solve that problem of course online training is good but we have certain issues right how can you make session more interactive more interesting and that's where i feel in next two years the technology will make an impact in education yes we have to come together to, to make it work even I'm trying to make education as simple as possible, as interactive as possible. But again, if you talk about YouTube, it's one way communication, right? What if you have questions? What if you want to make it your own? Uh, you want to customize it. Uh, what if you want to know the prerequisite for all the courses? Yes, I can talk about if you want to learn Android, you have to learn Java. But that's not the only prerequisite, right? We have certain gaps there as well. And that's where technology like AR, which is augmented reality, technology like AI can help you there. Maybe how, you know, the question would be, you know, how can we use AI here? Uh, think about this. If you want to join a course, let's say if you want to learn Spring Framework, yes, you can just ask your trainer, hey, uh, I want to learn Spring, tell me the prerequisites. Now, as a trainer, I will say, okay, to learn Spring, you need to know Java, you need to know MySQL, Hibernate. But what we forgot to mention that you should be good with programming as well, because it's not just learning about learning a language, right? If you know Java syntax, but if you don't know how to code in Java, it doesn't make any sense. So there's a gap there. You don't know how to write a code. Uh, you don't know what are dependencies, right? We are not talking about you should be knowing dependencies because the first session in Spring is dependency injection. And if you don't know what dependencies are, it will not make sense to you when you learn Spring. That's the gap I'm talking about. So as a trainer, I don't know if you know about those concepts and that's where AI can help you. Uh, again, I am not sure how AI will be implemented here because I'm not into AI as of now, but it should be used. What about AR, the augmented reality? You know, it's quite difficult to teach programming as well. In fact, not just programming, the technical subject. Example, let's say if you want to learn about how JVM works or maybe how operating system works. So yes, we can write on boards, we can, uh, we can use projector screen, we can show images. But what if I can just show you everything like this, okay, this is how JVM looks like. Inside this JVM, we have this type of memories. And so when you create the variable, this is what happens. When you create the object, this is what happens. When you destroy the object, this is what happens. Everything in 3D model. It makes much more sense, right? Because a lot of people, they are amazing visual learners, not a visual learners, not what you say, reading learners. Uh, so that so AR can make an impact here, which is augmented reality. So I'm sure at least maybe in not all the colleges, but some colleges will be using AR and AI in next three to four years in education. I want to be a part of it. <laughs> okay, so that's my excitement. Uh, so that's about that's the future of tech, uh, of education or technology in education. There are so many stuff. There are so many technologies we can include. Let me know what you think, which technology you feel can be used. Example, we have blockchain. Yes, I feel uh, we can use blockchain education as well. What are the fields we have? We can also use uh, IoT. I don't know how, but you tell me. You tell me what do you think about the future of education? What technology can be used in the comment section? So that's it everyone. That's from this video. Bye-bye.